shouldn't have left my uh, jacket in my baggage that I checked. Oh well. I remember this. First things first, I want to uh, get rid of my euros and my Swedish crown. Buy Swedish crowns. Well, the conversion didn't completely add up exactly, so I ended up with some Iceland money, which is pretty cool looking. Look at that. All right, well, we are in Iceland, and I have a little bit longer than I thought. We actually landed 25 minutes early, so it's like like 1.20 or 1.30 or something like that, and I don't have to be back. My plane doesn't even board till 5 p.m., so I have a little bit more time than I thought, and there was two, maybe three things all like right next to each other that I really wanted to do, so I think I actually have enough time to do it. Well, there's me, and I need to go. All right, well, the adventure starts now. Of course, I brought a really great jacket and didn't hardly need it at all this trip, especially last time I was in Iceland, so I put it in my suitcase, didn't need it, and it's raining out, so I got the Ultimate Warrior hat if I need it, and I'm just gonna take a taxi to my first stop. I'm gonna try and vlog a couple of things because I have about three hours. The thing that you guys are gonna see today, the Icelandic Music Hall of Fame. Well, here we are. I mean, other than Bjork, I don't know anything about Iceland rock and roll, so this ought to be great. I read about it online, I was like, after seeing the ABBA Museum, there's no way I'm gonna miss this. All right, gang, while we're here, let's go see what the Iceland Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has to offer. Let's go. Well, it starts here, friends, and this is gonna be a totally new experience for us all. We're going back to 1835. And let's go see some Icelandic rock and roll history. Bjarnar Leifsson of Monsters and Men is his band. And you can see right here, that's them. And then check out these outfits. That is great. Future rock stars, costuming is everything. Kids, you gotta pay attention to that. See, this is the key thing to any great costume right there. The Elvis belt buckle. And look, that is, that's pretty much the nudie suit. The nudie suit that Elvis was wearing for the famous album cover. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, this gentleman is all over the museum, so he must be a big deal here in Iceland. I'll show you, because he's in quite a few bands. He's the guy Bjor Bjorvin Halderson, and there he is. Now look at this, this is their equivalent of the, uh, the gold records and platinum record that you See always hanging up in famous studios and museums. I know that guy, the great Fats Domino. Happy Days fans, that's the, uh, I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill that Richie Cunningham would always sing. Now that is all, that is all that Jorgven Helderson, that's why I say he is a big deal here. They have pretty much an entire wall just dedicated to him, the people he played with, and the bands that he was in. John Lennon. I mean, this guy looks like he does a lot of tributes. He does, wow, he's all over the place. And there's his soundboard. Look at that. Any good sound technician always writes down what he's got on each control panel to make it much easier. The greats like Michael Carlson. <laughs> now look at this. You don't have to know anything about what's going on here to appreciate a great looking guitar. But these, these are not just like a bunch of guitars from various people. These are all his guitars. 
Look, they're all Bjorgans. Jeez, this dude is like the Elvis of this place. Look at that. A little like lifesaver prop. Pedal steel. Look at these guitars. I mean, the guys played just about every guitar there is. It looks like there's a Gretsch, Epiphones. He's got, wow, look at that Telecaster. The pickguard on that Telecaster is leather. That reminds me of um, Buddy Holly had an acoustic guitar that had a leather case that went over top of it. And after Gary Busey made uh, the Buddy Holly story, Gary Busey actually bought that guitar at an auction. But look, he's got pedal steel, he's got half guitars, he's got mandolins, ukuleles. He's one of those guys you can tell. True musician. You, if he doesn't know how to play it, he has to get it in his hands and learns how to play it. And there he's singing with Rod Stewart, you see that? By the way, what a great jumpsuit. Oh, look at that. There's a signed picture from Wolfman Jack. Now, I've never seen a guitar quite like that one before. Look at the shape of that. I bet right now my buddy Vinnie Roth's looking at this drooling. Dobro. Stratocaster with a Hawaiian lay. I like this guy. Oh, that's even Mardi Gras beads. Great. That's a great idea, actually. I have a white acoustic guitar. That, that was the very first guitar that I ever bought was a guitar that looks similar to this white guitar with a black pick card. That's a great idea for what to do to it. All right, let's go check out some more stuff. Gee, I wonder whose guitar this is. Could it be Bjorgen's? Yep, every time you see that logo at the very top, that's him. Man, I'm gonna have to do some investigating and listen to this guy's music when I get back to the States. All those outfits were his that we looked at too. Now check this out. This is, there's a, that's a tuning key. Well, actually, it's an award for the International Pop Song Festival that looks like a tuning key for a piano. Red telephone, maybe they were calling Batman. Look at that. Wolfman Jack. Elvis. Man, they love Elvis. Who doesn't? I do. I think Elvis is awesome. Let's go take a look over here. Now, I thought part of the fun with coming here and not knowing anything would be just kind of figuring it out, but now I'm kind of like, I wish I had enough time to sit and look through um, Google and try and figure out a little bit of this stuff because Bjorgen, it seems like I said, he looks like he's pretty much the Icelandic Elvis. There's a rock with his name on it. There's a music video that was filmed here in Iceland. That whole wall right there is Bjorgen. Either he owns the museum or he's just, he's an icon here. I wonder if he built his own Graceland. You have to wonder, don't you? Because if you look at his outfits, he's very like, very Elvisy in everything he does. I mean like all the way down to all the guitars and like you can tell there that it started all the way back into the history of the 60s. All these outfits, it just makes me wonder. If you loved Elvis that much, you kind of have to follow in the footsteps of having just an iconic house too. Oh, Tweety Bird. I know on camera he looks like he's like evil with red eyes, but it's actually just, they left the eyes blank for the same color of the uh, jacket. Oh man, I love looking at guitars. You don't even have to know how to play a guitar to appreciate the beauty and what, how it's designed and the shape of it and even more so what people that do know how to play it can do with it. I used to be able to do some pretty cool stuff with a guitar. Probably not so much now though. Some original tapes. Oh, look at that, you see that Pan Am? That reminds me of the uh, 
the Beatles had their um, Pan Am backpacks in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when I went. And see, that's him through the years as a boy. And that looks like early 20s. That was probably late 20s, 30s, and that's probably closer to now. So this dress actually has a pretty cool story because there's a woman who was a uh, singer here named Ellie, I'm trying to pronounce her right, Wilhelm's daughter. And the lady who donated this dress is actually pictured right there. And she donated it on Ellie's 80th birthday and what she said was that one day she was in Iceland in Reykjavik and walked into a secondhand clothing store and all the women working in the store were extremely excited because somebody had donated all of Ellie's clothes and the woman who got this went in there and bought this and this was one of her um, most famous dresses. Pretty great story, huh? Here's how you spell her name if you'd like to look up Ellie. Ellie Wilhelm's daughter. And there's a picture of Ellie. Not quite 80 years old in that picture, but that would have been her in her heyday. Look at that. What a beautiful lady. Oh, that is awesome. That's a very Captain Beefheart. All the way down to the shoes. Check that out. Those shoes are great. And then, of course, a Jordan the Lion style top hat. Actually, that's a little bit more like W.C. Fields from uh, My Little Chickadee. And then a great velvet shirt with a couple of owls on it. And all of the belongings in this case belong to this guy, Rona Yuleson. He, he kinda has a Captain Beefheart vibe to him, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm pretty excited because what's straight ahead is actually what I saw online that made me want to come here. Look at that. You know, if nothing else that I get out of this trip, it may very well inspire me to look into other types of music. Because Michael turned me on to a Swedish band years and years ago that I think I told you guys about, named Bob Hund. Actually, I mentioned that in the ABBA vlog, so you haven't heard it yet, but the band's name was Bob Hund, B-O-B space H-U-N-D. And I really got into it not even knowing any of the, what the words were. But I loved the music, and I loved the vowels that they were singing. So it actually may inspire me to kind of look into it. They just showed a picture of Bjork, like I told the lady when I came in, I asked her if I could film. She said, absolutely. I said, well, I just want to show, you know, people that watch my channel and people in the United States a little bit more um, to show them that not all Iceland is just Bjork. Now you can see that's So in this case is actually the microphone, and you can see him using it here in the pictures of an artist on both of these albums. The name of the band is uh, Megas and Sainab Jonafar, and the albums are called Hold Your Mold and Fregengur, if you want to look into it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Emiliana, and look, the dress is right there. Yeah! The detail on that dress is great. It almost looks like it's made out of paper mache or confetti. Cool. All right. Oh, cool. I always love military dress, like, the way that military clothing looks. That's, I think that was one of the things that was, to me, always so cool about Michael Jackson is that he saw that, like how cool the jackets were and how like just showmanshipy it looked. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so the band that they're playing right now, this is what I saw online that made me want to come. These are like, they're all made out of wood. Look at it. We got to get up close and personal. And they did the entire band. I think they, this was used in their music video. He's even got sunglasses. Rad. Look at that. I'm not going to take anything away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the United States, but they don't have stuff like this. I know it's an ever-revolving um, set of objects that they display, but... You don't, at least when I've seen it, I've never seen a band do something this out there. That's great. 
I hope my uh, talking covers up a little bit of the music so I don't get flagged, but look at the bass player. Typical bass player, shoved in the back, looking down. Typical drummer, getting covered up by the singer. <laughs> yeah, they did not forget Bjork. They have a whole display over here. I'm hoping they have some of her clothes because not only is Bork, Bjork beautiful, but uh, she's always known for having great costumes. As you can see right there, I remember selling that album when I worked at a record store when I was a teenager. And then look at that. Maybe that's an Icelandic thing. They really appreciate the showmanship. I feel like bands have lost that. Lady Gaga does it, but I don't know. Other than her, there's nobody really else that does it. Now look at that. That is basically the the artist name is Paul Oscar. This is basically kind of like an Elvis jumpsuit, but it's all lined in LED lights. Look at that. That is so cool. I'm thinking uh, future outfit for Jordan the Lion or something like it. Now this is an outfit worn by Herbert Gunmanson, and it actually kind of reminds me of the uh, kind of reminds me of the Graham Parsons look to an extent. Pretty cool shirt. Oh yeah, they did not forget the details. They went all, even all onto the back of the drummer. You can see all that. That is so cool. Look at the drum set. They put the um, the markings where like a real drummer would be hitting. That's even better. Look at the kick drum. Oh, look at his shoes. Shoes and socks. <laughs> cool. Now I'm told there's also an upstairs, so we'll make it up there. If you don't know anything about any of the musicians here, you can treat this like walking through any kind of art museum. All right, let's see what's through these doors that look like barcodes. So this goes into show you all the Lifetime Achievement Awards, people that have received them here. Look who's very first, our old buddy, Bjorgen in 1993. Great. Absolutely great. Oh, duh, I forgot Sig Ross was from here. I've seen them in concert. I actually like them a lot. Totally forgot. Sorry about that weird blur in the middle. That's just the lighting in here. But it, Sig Ross is extremely accessible, especially this album. If you, if you want to check them out, that's the album to check out, I would say. And a lot of people actually came to know Sigur Ross because they, um, like in the early 2000s, that's how I found out about them, they opened for Radiohead and actually started their own studio and were recording their own music. So they're, they're like actually a band that creates and controls their own sound, which is always awesome. So I believe this section right here is the very end of what they have for me to see. So we're going to walk our way around it and check out all the great costumes and you'll be able to see right above them whose costumes they are, which is great. Gordios, wow that is intense. Those are massive, ma they look like they're almost made out of metal, but they're, uh, they're pretty big sequins, look at that, those are not the tiny sequins that you usually see, those are massive. That's a, uh, looks like a prop duck or something. And then this looks almost like a uh, Mardi Gras outfit. Oh, these are, uh, this may be, this may be the, the pride section, the gay pride section, because it's starting to look a lot like that. You see it right there, but as I look around, I see, um, I see by the outfits that it's highly possible that's it. Oh, that's a pretty cool outfit though, look at that. It's all um, Asian writing. I don't know what that's specifically called. Jokingly, I used to always call it hieroglyphics, but I don't know what it's legitimately called. Now here's that outfit and the outfit that's right there 
That's right there. And then this actually looks similar to the kind of things that Liberace used to wear. You see that? The kind of the cape look. And then he's got the suit as part of it. But this thing's kind of iridescent. Catches different glares and it has a bit of a pink shine to it. Otherwise it's pretty cream. Cream color-y. And that's who it belongs to. And there's actually not only an award that he's won, you can see right there, but some of the original lyrics. And then you have this, look at that outfit. This is pretty, pretty flashy, which <sighs> rock and roll supposed to be. Even when Guns N' Roses were like bringing back kind of the biker look and wearing leather and all that stuff, it was still flashy. The trick is you have to make something that captures people's attention and remembers you in their mind. That's why I wear the green sunglasses. I would have never ever worn green sunglasses, but I decided when I started my channel I was gonna wear, I was gonna buy like every color and I just randomly wear a different color every day. But the only two colors that showed up from my order were yellow and green. The yellow didn't look good on me, so I wore the green. And then every time I wore it, people would say, oh, I really like those sunglasses on you. And then people started to recognize me because they're like, oh, yeah, you were in, um, I saw you in this and this because you were wearing the green sunglasses. And even when people come and find my channel from Adam the Woo, they're like, oh, I recognize you from the green sunglasses. So I'm, I'm tapping my head right now. You can't see it, but that's why I do it. Just something to people to remember you. No thanks on that outfit. But uh, there you go. That looks like that might be the end of our Icelandic tour, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Here's kind of an overview from the second floor, but let me tell you something. The people that work here, especially the lady down here, could not have been nicer she was extremely friendly to me when I came in and she saw me with a big backpack and she said, would you like me to hold your backpack back here so you can walk around and be comfortable? And I said, or not knock anything over? And she said, eh, it's more about keeping you comfortable. So kudos to this museum, definitely check it out. If you have a layover in um, Keflavik, it's literally a five minute, maybe five and a half minute <laughs> taxi ride from the airport. And this was stuff that I saw when I came through here the uh, like two weeks ago and didn't have a chance to stop and see. And I thought it was only fitting to end with looking at pictures of Bjorgen since he seems to be the very first person to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. Let's honor him here at the end. Good bye Lionhearts. Well, gang, I hope that you enjoyed this little trip into the Icelandic Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I hope this proves to you that you don't have to know anything about something to go in and enjoy it and to learn something and be inspired by it. Have a great night. I'm off to my next adventure that you will see in the future. Okay, it was pouring outside, so I had to put the hat on, but you're not gonna believe this. I just ran into my old neighbor from my apartment building. She moved away like a year ago. I was running through the airport and she's like, Jordan? How odd is that? Literally, she used to live right across the hall. She used to help walk jaw sometimes. Well, somehow I made it done with all of my exploring and vlogging and got back here 15 minutes before they board my flight, even with all the TSA BS. All right, finally going home. Los Angeles, here I come. Well, I'm finally going home. And remember how early in my trip I said I barely spent any money? I made up for that in the last three days. I spent an alarming amount of money at museums, food, taxis, trains, buses, an alarming amount of money. <laughs> Holy cow. It's gonna, I'm gonna have to work my butt off when I get home, but I'll be home soon. Whew. Good trip, but I'm ready to go. Cabin crew, take your seats for takeoff.
now and know just what to 